de Jesus. Church, I'm finding more power than I ever knew. Church, I'm learning to lean on Jesus. Let's say that again. And Lord, I want you to say the verse. Learning to lean. Church, I'm learning. Every day, every day I'm learning. Learning how to lean. Oh, Jesus. Every day I'm finding more power. To lay on Listen. Begin your Bibles, begin your Bibles. The book of Ephesians. I'm telling you, y'all are sounding better and better. And we thank God for you because I do believe that God wants us to keep moving higher. From the sixth chapter, starting at the 13th verse, it says, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the Eva day. And having done all to stand. And a part of that 14th verse it says, Stand therefore, otherwise stand anyhow. Our Father and our God, we are grateful that I am able through you, the Father, to stand in the presence of your people. And I ask, dear Father, that you speak through your messenger. I may speak to your people 
bless the hearers, that they will find a place and hide thy word in their heart. Bless us and keep us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore. My brothers and sisters, Nobody else stand for God but you. You stand. Nobody else speak a word of truth. You speak it. One of the church's greatest challenge today is getting the church to stand firm as believers on the word of God. People will stray from the word of God. Getting people not to waver the truth, but stand firm on what God has promised to his church. Have you ever looked back and wondered how you got over? There was a time no money. A time I had no job. I was in the in the employment line. A time when the food got low. Sickness in the family, very few friends, couldn't afford the medicine. Have you ever looked back and thought about who brought you through and what you had to do? And the only reason, my brothers and sisters, we made it through was because we stood on the word of God. Otherwise, you had your armor on. In the church, we stand. When the preachers come to the pulpit, you stand. In the courtroom, when the judge come in, you stand. Weddings, when the bride come in, you stand. Baseball game, the seventh inning stretch. You stand. When the national anthem is played, you stand. And the service, you stand attention. Then the sergeant might say, at ease, you still stand. When the flag is being read or the anthem is being sung, you stand with your hand over your heart. But this is not what I'm talking about, stand. That's the way the world stands. We got to stand in the time of trouble. And in the time of trouble, you got to know who it is that is able to take care of you. Look at somebody and say, I've been through some things. Shed many tears. Had to walk alone. But I'm still standing. Come on, give God a hand, Sam. Still standing. I thank God. I thank God for your standing. Paul, Paul sh shares with the church there in Ephesus how to stand and how to defeat the enemy. And in the 10th verse of that chapter, and you, if you want to get your Bible and follow me for a while, but uh, I won't go that fast, but you... I will spell it out to you. But in that 10th verse, he's, it says, be strong in the Lord. Not in man. Be strong in the Lord. And said, and in the power of his might. God has the power. Uh, we don't have no power if it wasn't for God. Everything moves by the power of God. Then in the 11th verse, it said, put on. Not take off, but put on the whole armor of God. Why? That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The devil is real. 
The devil is out to kill you and destroy you, to embarrass you and to bring all things against you that he can to shame you for being a child of God. So Paul said, put it on that ye may be able to stand. We are in a everyday battle. Every day you wake up, every day the sun rises, whether you see it or not, there's a battle going on. And somebody's in it besides you. Uh, so, so why is Paul, why is Paul telling uh, the church this? Why is he telling us this? He said, because we wrestle not against flesh and blood. You don't have to worry about this flesh. Is what get holds of the flesh. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, uh, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against, listen to this, spiritual wickedness in high places. Let me know, let, I want you to know that there's spiritual wickedness in the church. Many times in high places. Spiritual wickedness is not all the time outside the church, but there's spiritual wickedness inside the church. That's the reason Paul said in order to, to put this down and put the enemy down, you must have on the whole armor of God. See, religion not going to get you to heaven. We have, a many, we have many religious folks, but how many saved people? Folks, do we have? Are you standing? Are you standing? Are you standing? Uh, will you get off the ship time something happens? Most time we are abandoned ship when we, when we get caught up. But you got to learn how to stay in the ship. Sometime you got to be embarrassed. Yeah, yeah. Sometime you got to be talked about. Sometimes you got to be lied on. But if you have on the armor of God, you can withstand that which the devil is bringing up against you. And the church is not exempt from problem. When you join the church of God, he didn't say you're going to get away on a bed of ease. That you're going to have a piece of pie in the sky. But he said you're going to suffer and go ahead and suffer as a Christian. Paul said I'm a prisoner. And I'm willing to go through something in order to receive something. We got to learn how to go through some things in order to receive some things. If you haven't been through nothing, you don't know nothing. But if you've been sick and couldn't even feed yourself, Heard the gentleman said he couldn't even walk. If you ever been down and couldn't put one foot before the other and, and you come down, you, you're not going to depend on somebody else. You're going to call on Jesus. He said, take upon you the whole armor of God. Y'all better listen today. You're here today because of your war suit. How many have got your war suit on? I, 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 I don't for, have you got your war suit on? I'm going to test you after a while. Uh, we're here today because we come to fight the devil in, on his own territory. The devil come to your de territory. He call it his, but we coming and fight him. Uh, oh, yeah, we're going to move him uh, from his ease. Uh, Sometimes the devil get in your home, on your job, and f get at ease. Sit there, you're not bothering him. You're not messing with him, so you tell a joke every now and then, he laughs. Uh, you smile at him, he laughs. But Paul is saying when you have on the whole armor of God, when you have on your war suit, uh, some of the things you go through you can't believe, you'll still stand. When you look back and say, my God, if I'd have had my gun, if I'd have had my hammer, you wouldn't be here today, but God had you to have your war suit on. Now, I, now, now don't, for, don't forget that you are saved, but you are apt. 
to do something. Anybody ever done something that you weren't supposed to do as a Christian? I didn't see but two hands in here. Every hand should have went up. If you didn't hit nobody, you roll your eyes. If you didn't roll your eyes, you hung up somebody on somebody. Everybody in here, because the Bible said we all have come short of the glory of God. And, and we got nothing to brag on but Jesus. It's only him that is keeping us in our right mind. If he leave us, what in the world would we do? But thank God, thank God. Uh, think about those that uh, had on the armor when uh, their husband or the wife walked out on them and they said, Lord, I'm going to stand on your promise. Uh, I'm going to stay right here. I, I might have to go through some things. I might have to eat beans. I might have to sop syrup. Uh, and I might have to eat soda crackers. Uh, but I'm going to stay right here and I'm going to do the will of God. And God stepped in. Only because of the armor to some didn't want you to stand. Do you know that some people don't want you to stand? Can I get real? Hey, Deacon Miller, can I get real? Some people don't want you to stand. Some people don't want you to prosper. I'm talking about so-called Christians. They will get mad with you if they see you prospering. But when they get mad with you, just rear back and say, I'm still standing. Nothing going to bring me down. You should stand today. I wonder if I got two people in here. We'll stand up and look around and tell somebody been talking about you. I'm still standing. You wanted me to fall, but I want you to look at, turn all the way around and say, I know you wanted me to fall, but I'm still standing. And I'm going to stand because I'm standing on the promises of God. Good God of mine. They said, some said, I, I wouldn't make it. Some said I wouldn't amount for anything. Some said I wouldn't even be here today. But I want you to tell them that flowers is still standing. I'm standing on one who cannot fail. Why? Because God who is rich in his mercy cleaned up what I messed up. I said he cleaned up. What I messed up. I, I wasn't saved all my life, but he cleaned up my life. That I would be able to stand in his presence. Why? Because his grace and his mercy brought all of us out. The devil don't like it. And wherever you go, people are going to be jealous of you. If it ain't in your home, people be jealous of you in your own home. Charity start where? Oh, at the job? Down the street? But charity must begin at home and then do what? The Lord did it, and he'll do it again. I think Sister uh, Carolyn sang that song, Who Did It? And she got down there and said, God did it. Who did it? God did it. Who did it? God did it. And my brothers and sisters, so the Bible teaches us, and Paul admonished us to let us hold fast the gospel of Jesus Christ. People are leaving the gospel. People don't want to hear the real gospel. They don't want you to talk about sin. They don't want you to talk about crucifying the flesh. They want, don't want you to talk about uh, uh, hiding the word in your heart uh, until they get in trouble. 
Paul said we got to preach that saving grace. We got to preach the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And if we're not preaching the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, that Christ was crucified, died, went on a grave, and rose again for us, we just were to sit down. Paul said we are to preach this, that our soul will be saved and save God's people. Paul said, uh, woe unto me if I preach not the gospel. I sit and uh, I looked, and God has carried me some things now at so many, and I had, had a, one of my preachers that left call me the other day, and I can tell he was burdened. See, I never run nobody off from here. They run their own self off. I'm humble. And, and uh, I said, how you doing? Well, uh, I know he was asking me, okay, well, would you look out for me? Not so. Sometime you got to learn how to be a good soldier. Go and learn from somebody else. But uh, I wondered, I said, every preacher, watch here, that left here, ordained, licensed them. Had people to come in, they left, and never come back to say thank you. Close to 20 people. Never walked back and too proud. To come. Why, I always put it on some of y'all. Said, I can't come back, them people are talking about me. That's a poor excuse for preachers and deacons and members. Y'all be here next Sunday because I'm going to talk about the third voice. The third voice have separated so many people from God. But Paul said that souls will be saved and God's people delivered. Paul said, woe unto me if I preach not the gospel. So he emphasized that the church is the body of Christ and Christ is the head of the church. You can't come into God's house. And be the head of God's house if he had not set you in order. This epistle falls into two parts. The first chapter through the third verse. And I want you to listen closely because we have many people to misunderstand their calling. He tells the believers who and what they are in Christ. That we are special and specially made. Bought with a price. We are the sons of God. Made in the image of God. Holy. We are his and the sheep of his pastor. The thing, know who you are. Know who, I shouldn't have to tell you who you are. God should be able to tell you who you are. And Paul pick, his, pick it up in the fourth and sixth uh, verse uh, uh, in the fourth and sixth chapter, he said, he, he said, what we must do now that we are Christians in Christ, now we are to tell the people the truth. He said, now that we are Christians, now that we are in Christ, now that you are saved, work in your own ministry. How can you work in my ministry? It's quiet in here. Get out of my ministry. Work in your own ministry. This is what Paul is telling the church. In Ephesus, they was in everybody's business. In the missionaries. In the past. Stay in yours. Run yours. Do your job. And your ministry will flourish. Am I talking right to anybody? Am I, am I hurting anybody's feeling? I don't care. But he said, work in your ministry. If God has called you, you should know your calling and your ministry. Then Paul said, if he call you and you know your ministry, walk worthy. I'm, I'm talking about Bible now. 
I'm not making this. This is what Paul is saying in, in the word. He said, once you're in your ministry, walk worthy of your ministry. Don't be a know-it-all. Leave some room for improvement. Don't walk out of your calling. When you walk out of your calling, that's like me trying to be a, a sergeant in the army. And I can't even do a bow for you. So they're going to keep me at a private. Is that what destroyed that? But Paul said, stay and walk in your calling. He said, in order to do that, you got to put on the whole armor of God. I can't make men and women. God makes you. I can only see some good in you and hoping that you will listen to the voice of God. You listen to my voice sometime, you might not get everything you want to hear. Paul said, do this that you may be able to stand not just on Sunday, that you can stand during the week. Some of us as good Christians on Sunday, and we are the best devils. But if you got your armor on, you're willing to come to church and say, burn flowers. Pastor, I'm with you. I got my war suit on. And I'm willing to go with you to the devil's camp. And we're not going to ask the devil for anything, but we're going to take back. Somebody ought to look back and say, I need to take back some things. I'm taking back the joy. Some of you had a lot of joy one time, but y'all's smile is getting sour. I'm telling the truth. Your peace. I'm taking back my truth. Taking back my family, my job that I lost because the devil put something in a bottle and I drank a little bit and I felt good and cursed my boss out and now I don't have a job. But now that I got on my armor, I'm going to take it back. Take back that money that I wasted. My friends that are lost by acting crazy, I'm going to take it back. David said the ungodly shall not stand in the congregation, in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. See, most people think they can be sinners and stand against God. But Paul said, you cannot stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. You can't stand in this church if you're unrighteous. You might get by for a while, but everything that's done in the dark, Somebody should have raised their hand on that. Everything that you do in the dark, it might take years, but it will come to the light. If you hide it on a bushel, you can't see no light from that candle. Isaiah 40 and 8 said the grass, the grass wither, the flower faded, but the word of God shall never shall stand forever. You hear that? The grass wither, the flower faded, but the word of God shall stand forever. You stand on the word of God. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. They put you out in the church for telling the truth. Let them put you out. They don't want you to come back to church. You tell them to hold your mule while you get a little shout in and go thank God that I'm leaving a church that don't believe in praising God. I'm still, I'm still standing. I've seen the lightning flash. And I've heard the thunder roll. But I promised the Lord a long time ago, I shall go, I will go. 
I'm going to see what the end going to be. Look at Brother David. David said, when I confronted uh, the Philistine army champ, uh, Goliath uh, and we had uh, and I got to tell you something uh, somebody don't believe it but we have some Goliaths uh, in the church that every now and then uh, God has to come against uh, and do what he has to do David said uh, when they brought uh, Goliath before him uh, oh yes the weapon they wanted to give me I said they wasn't right uh, let me tell you the devil wants you to fight with your fists but I'll fight you with the word of God uh, the devil wants you to use a gun uh, but I'll fight you with the word of God uh, the devil wants you to lie and say oh all manner of things, but I'll fight you on my knees. I'll pray and use God's word. And when I pray and if I pray right, God's going to hear my prayer and he's going to answer all of my supplication. David said the weapon they wanted him to wear or carnal. Don't you know you can't wear carnal clothes? You can't have the carnal outfit on and expect to fight uh, the devil. The devil is the carnal and you don't fight uh, uh, with Satan uh, armor. You got to get the armor of God. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 10 and 4, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God uh, to the pulling down of strongholds. I've had had some strongholds uh, in the church, uh, but I got news for you. I've seen, uh, I've seen the strongholds uh, be pulled down, uh, and God, with a meek spirit, uh, God is always uh, can win the battle. Uh, Isaiah said in fifty-four and seventeen, "No weapon uh, formed against you uh, shall prosper." Flowers they might uh, form it against the church, uh, but the church is going to move on uh, because my church uh, was built uh, on a solid foundation. My church uh, was built on my word. Uh, for I said upon this rock uh, I'll build my church uh, and the gates of hell uh, shall not prevail against it. Uh, so don't worry. Just stay in the word. Uh, David said take, uh, take it off. Uh, take, off the, take off the armor uh, that you want me to fight uh, Goliath with. Uh, and I want you to fight uh, I want to fight God's way. David said, take it off. Somebody ought to tell the Lord, take off that which is hindering me. Take off that meanness. Take out that lying spirit. Take out that frowning and grumbling. Take it off. Some of us, some of us got armors. But the wrong armor. David said, I'm going to fight uh, God's way. How many know you got to do it God's way? Uh, he said, what I'm going to do? Uh, I guarded uh, my father's sheep. Uh, and I didn't have nothing uh, but a slingshot. Uh, and I'm going to take uh, this weapon. Uh, and I don't need uh, but five stone. Uh, and listen uh, at Goliath. Uh, don't you know the devil will rise up. Uh, and he'll look at you uh, and say, look at you. You are no match for me. Uh, but David knew uh, what he had. Uh, he had the whole armor of God on. Uh, and he had in his uh, shepherd bag, uh, he had five uh, smooth stone. Uh, it didn't take all five. Uh, it doesn't take uh, ever gift uh, to win the battle. Uh, but you can take uh, just one gift uh, and use it uh, to the glory of God. Uh, and you can get the job done uh, he said, uh, you take it off. Uh, I'm going to fight now. So he chose uh, five stone, uh, placed a stone in his slingshot. Anybody know what a slingshot is? Uh, anybody know what a slingshot is? Uh, that's a piece of rubber. Uh, and some have a prone. Uh, and you put a little uh, 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 pad on it and you pull it back. Uh, and it will knock your head off your body. I've killed so many birds with it. So you would think that couldn't kill uh, a big giant, uh, the Philistine army. Well, my brothers, uh, do you know uh, if you uh, want to fight the devil uh, on his territory, you can go to his camp. Uh, do you know uh, you got to do this? Uh, arm yourself uh, with the blast plate uh, of righteousness. Uh, 
have your foot, uh, your feet shot uh, with the preparation of the gospel. Have the shield of faith. Uh, have uh, that you can quench uh, all the fairy dots uh, of the wicked. Uh, take the helmet uh, of salvation uh, and the sword of the spirit uh, and you get on the battlefield. Uh, and my brothers and sisters, uh, if you're ready to fight, uh, you ought to tell the devil uh, to bring it on uh, and bring it on. Uh, don't you know uh, he killed uh, Goliath, uh, cut off his head, uh, and I believe uh, I believe uh, you got to do this today. Uh, I believe uh, you got to chop off uh, not physical, the devil's head. Uh, he got too much of mouth. Uh, she got too much of mouth, uh, so close the mouth uh, with the word of God. Uh, let the people know uh, that God is not pleased uh, with arguments. Uh, God is not pleased uh, with meanness. Uh, God God wants you dressed in the armors that he can use you. And the reason God is not using some people because you're not ready to be used. God said, I'm looking for somebody and who will go for me. Isaiah said, hear my Lord send me. Are you ready? Are you standing? If God call you and say, I'm able to stand against the wiles of the devil. I got my army suit on. I'm going in the battle. David, David, a man after God's own heart, prove that you can win the battle if you have on the armor of God. Somebody ought to thank God if you got on a little bit, put on the rest of it. Don't go out and your head uncovered. Don't go out without the shield. Don't go out without uh, your feet uh, shadow with the preparation of the gospel but when you walk uh, walk by faith uh, believing that God uh, will deliver you uh, I heard uh, Isaiah said uh, he tested me now uh, he said when I went uh, to the uh, temple uh, and I looked in the temple uh, I lost my job uh, oh yeah uh, when you lose your job uh, you lose your money uh, you lose your friend uh, you come to the church Church, uh, looking for help. Uh, Isaiah uh, was on the outside. Uh, he didn't go in. Uh, but I heard uh, the word of God say. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, uh, let us go in the house uh, of the Lord. Uh, Isaiah said, when I went in, uh, I saw something. Uh, I heard something. Uh, I felt something. I saw the Lord uh, high and lifted up. Uh, and the trend uh, Fill the temple. He said, I heard, I heard a voice. It was so loud uh, until the temple, the beams in the temple began to shake. Uh, and I fell down uh, to my knees uh, and I cried out, uh, Whoa, uh, unto me. Uh, I'm a wretch uh, and undone. Uh, I heard uh, the Bible say uh, that an angel went and took uh, a live coal uh, from off the fire uh, and put it on the Isaiah tongue and said Isaiah your sins are purged and your iniquity is gone you ready now you got your war suit on you ready now and God said I'm going to test him I want to see if he's ready God said I need somebody and who will go for us and Isaiah said here am I oh Lord send me I want if the Lord call you today are you willing to stand up and say, I'll go? I say, I got to test you. Go and tell Hezekiah to set his house in order because he shall die and not live. Look at Isaiah. Hezekiah, the Lord said, not somebody else, uh, but the Lord said, uh, set your house uh, in order because you're going to die and not live. Isaiah, he didn't add or didn't take away. He said what the Lord said. What did Hezekiah do as ever believer in the time of trouble? Believe that God will hide you in his provision. 
Uh, Hezekiah turned his face uh, to the wall, Sister McCarty, and said, Lord, let me paraphrase this. Uh, Lord, uh, I've tried to walk uh, upright. Uh, I've tried to do a little good here and a little good there. Oh, Lord, uh, would you give me uh, a little more time? Isaiah, tell Hezekiah, I'm going to add uh, to his life uh, 15 more years. Uh, tell him uh, I've seen his tears. Uh, I've heard his cry. And these years, I'm going to let him live uh, longer than he should have lived. Uh, ain't God good? Uh, is God good? Uh, only if you stand uh, on his promise. Uh, I'm standing. Uh, I'm standing uh, on the promises uh, that cannot fail. Uh, I'm standing uh, because God God told me I can stand. I'm standing in the sunshine. I'm standing in the rain. Stand. Look at somebody and tell them you stand. Wherefore, take upon you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand in these evil days. And when you have done all you can do. Anybody ever felt they've been right there? Lord, I can't do. Yes, you can. What I tell you do, stand still. Moses, stand still and see the salvation. There will come a time in order for you to stand, you're going to have to keep your mouth closed. You got to be so innocent and stretch out on the word of God and God will rescue. What did he tell Moses? Stretch out your rod. When he stretched out the rod, the water had to move that the children could walk across on dry land. Isn't that something? It should have been muddy. But the Bible said on dry land, he will dry up things that's muddy. He will dry up things that you get bogged down in. But you got to stand. Stand. And the only way we're going to stand is put it on the whole armor of God. Are you going to put it on? Do you have it on? If you got it on, stand on your feet. If you don't have it on, stand on your feet and run up here. We know I never apologize for preaching the gospel because what I said, somebody need this. Because we are not standing. It does my heart good when I hear the warriors praying on Tuesday. My God, those prayers ringing out. The testimonials. The pastor began to get stronger. I told my daughter, I, I want to hear them. I can just lay back and listen when your voice ring out. The only thing that's going to take us to make it through, we say, paying the mortgage off. I'm a church. I think we can live together and help one another. 